A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. As activists across the U.S. gather support for ending mass incarceration, one community organizer, Raj Jayadev, wants to rework the U.S. court system through participatory defense, a growing movement that empowers families and community members to impact their loved ones' court cases. In today's episode, Raj shares the remarkable results of the Albert Cobarubias Justice Project and how this program's work aims to transform the landscape of power in U.S. courts through policy initiatives. This is my favorite protest shirt. It says, protect your people. We made it in the basement of our community center. I've worn it at rallies, at protests, at marches, at candlelight vigils with families who have lost loved ones to police violence. I've seen how this ethic of community organizing has been able to change arresting practices, hold individual officers accountable, and allow families to feel strong and supported in the darkest moments of their lives. Over 90 percent of people that face a criminal charge in this country will take a plea deal, meaning they'll never have their fabled day in court that we talk about in television shows and in movies. And this is the untold part of the story of mass incarceration in America, how we became the largest jailer in the world. Over two million people currently incarcerated in this country, and projections that say one out of three black men will see the inside of a prison cell at some point in their life on this trajectory. But we have a solution. We decided to be irreverent to this idea that only lawyers can impact the courts and to penetrate the judicial system with the power, intellect, and ingenuity of community organizing. We call the approach participatory defense. It's a methodology for families and communities uh, whose loved ones are facing charges and how they can impact the outcome of those cases and transform the landscape of power in the courts. How it works is families whose loved ones are facing criminal charges will come to a weekly meeting, and it's half support group, half strategic planning session and they'll build a community out of what otherwise would be an isolating and lonely experience. And they'll sit in a circle and write the names of their loved ones on a board who they're there to support. And collectively, the group will find out ways to tangibly and tactfully impact the outcome of that case. They'll review police reports to find out inconsistencies, They'll find areas that requires more investigation by the defense attorney, and they'll go to court with each other for the emotional support, but also so that the judge knows that the person standing before them is part of a larger community that is invested in their well-being and success. And the results have been remarkable. We've seen charges get dismissed, sentences significantly reduced, acquittals won at trial, and sometimes it has been literally life-saving. And with each new case, the families identify new ways to flex the knowledge of the community to have impact on the court system. We would go to a lot of sentencing hearings, and when we would leave the sentencing hearing and on the walk back to the parking lot after someone's loved one just got sent to prison, the most common refrain we would hear wasn't so much, I hate that judge, or I wish we had a new lawyer. What they would say was, I wish they knew him like we know him. And so we developed tools and vehicles for families to tell the fuller story of the loved one so they would be understood as more than just a case file. They started making what we call social biography packets, which is families making a compilation of photos and certificates and letters that show past challenges and hardships and accomplishments and future prospects and opportunities. And the social biography videos were working so well in the courts 
that we evolved it into social biography videos, 10-minute mini documentaries, which were interviews of people in their homes, and at their churches and at their workplace, explaining who the person was in the backdrop of their lives. And it was a way for us to dissolve the walls of the court temporarily, and through the power of video, bring the judge out of the court and into the community. So that they would be able to understand the fuller context of someone's life that they're deciding the fate of. One of the first social biography projects that came out of our camp was by Carnell. He had come to the meetings because he had pled to a low-level drug charge, and after years of sobriety, got arrested for this one drug possession charge. But he was facing a five-year prison sentence because of the sentencing schemes in California. We knew him primarily as a dad. He'd bring his daughters to the meetings and then play with them at the park across the street. And he said, "Look, I could do the time, but if I go in, they're going to take my girls." And so we gave him a camera and said, "Just take pictures of what it's like being a father." And so he took pictures of making breakfast for for his daughters and taking them to school, taking them to after-school programs and doing homework. And it became this photo essay. That he turned into his lawyer, who used at the sentencing hearing, and that judge, who originally indicated a five-year prison sentence, understood Carnell in a whole new way, and he converted that five-year prison sentence into a six-month outpatient program, so that Carnell could be with his daughters, his girls would have a father in their life, and Carnell could get the treatment that he was actually seeking. We're training organizations all over the country now in participatory defense, and we have a national network of over 20 cities. And it's a church in Pennsylvania, it's a parents association in Tennessee, it's a youth center in Los Angeles. And with all the hubs, we still use one metric that we invented. It's called time saved. It's a saying that we actually still say at weekly meetings. And what we say when a family comes in the meeting for the first time. Is if you do nothing, the system is designed to give your loved one time served. That's the language the system uses to quantify time of incarceration. But if you engage, if you participate, you can turn time served into time saved. That is, parents and children's lives, young people going to college instead of prison. We're ending generational cycles of suffering. We're now wearing this shirt in courts all across the country, and people are wearing this shirt because they want the immediacy of protecting their people in the courtroom. But what we're telling them is, as practitioners, they're building a new field, a new movement that is going to forever change the way justice is understood in this country. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Binghamton, New York. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Binghamton University. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening. And see you tomorrow.